have in my cupboard. I won't get rid of it because it was my... It's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, can I hold him? Yeah. Can I hold him? Don't get restless. Oh. Can I hold him? Such a little... First things first, I'm the realist. Realist. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. Reality TV has really made a comeback this year and it's really spilt over into social media. Everybody's been getting involved, even if you don't usually watch Big Brother or The Bachelor, I think pretty much everybody's been getting involved. But I want to ask you, what do you actually think are the pros and cons of being on reality TV? Not for Australia watching, um, but for the actual contestants. Um, actually, there's no pros to Australia <laughs> watching it also. I yeah, just think it eats away that the, you know, your brain cells. Um, I, I don't know, unless you are a super talented person or you really have something great to sell after the show is over, there really is no pro for you. You just go on there, you get to embarrass yourself, you get to embarrass your family and everybody that knows you and you walk away with, yeah, okay, 15 minutes of people and you're watching, you take a shower in your underwear and like totally... But what about The Bachelor? Down. Maybe somebody can find love. That's a big pro. I'm sorry, but if you go on the back, you know how I feel about this. If you, in your right mind, think that you can go against 30 other women and compete for love on television and think you are going to walk away with something real, there's, you need to get that checked. Real. I think a lot of the women who go on, I think they're going on for the experience. That's what they want to walk away with. Yes, the idea of love. I think you have to be a little bit crazy to actually go on there for love. But a lot of people working nine to five, it's a big experience. You get whisked away, you get, you know, treated like a celebrity okay. with producers. I, I, I totally, I understand that. You get, yeah, you want, you want a new experience. But don't go in there and really, you've lied to yourself that much where you believe you're going to go find love. And first of all, let's just put this. When 30 women are competing for one guy, half the time, if you're a woman, you actually know this. When the competitive factor kicks in, you think you're in love with him. You're not. You're just competitive and you're overwhelmed by your emotions, right? Well, so it's an overwhelming think... experience that a lot of people probably don't have in real life. And the producers do and a, really a good job. would you really have that experience in real life? Really, truly. If you're dating somebody that's well, dating I don't think two Blake. People, you know, if he, in hindsight, looking back on it, I don't think he would have done this show again. No, and you know why? The biggest problem with this, it's not even what went on on the show. Okay, whatever. It was a fun show. We all got involved. We got interactive. Good job, Channel Ten producers. But the worst part of it for me is what I've just found the worst case of bullying coming from the, we all go about, you know, teaching kids not to bully and do this and do that. As in the media but bullying the, the contestants, yes, Blake. The it it has gone a little bit too far and the scary thing is it's Channel 10 producing The Bachelor and The Project. So they're also trying to get information about him and I feel like the contestants are stuck because yes. they do sign clauses. Um, it, it's really contradictory because we're always talking about bullying but yeah, it's really the worst case. And just one little, little thing I have with it. Or you can't bash him that much. Okay, yeah, he did a douchey thing, and yes, he could have been more of a stuck stand up guy. Agreed. But there's just no way, no way that those women should be allowed to expect anything than what he's offering. You went on a show with 30 other people, and at the end of it, you think he owes you something? That's not correct. Look, if and somebody proposes to you and then on live television and you actually say yes, and then he takes I'm it sorry. back. Last week, he patched three other people and made them say I love you to him. But I think I think the girls actually did okay. I think the girls had more pros. Um, a few of them got modeling contracts. They're going to events. You know, they're, they're getting oh, their 15 minutes of they're celebrity. Going to they're having a bit of fun. So I think there are a few pros. A few of them got a little bit more exposure. But enough with the Bachelor. I think that one's already dried out. Okay. So do you agree with us? Are there more pros to doing reality TV or more cons to doing reality TV? Let us know on the dnshow.com. Thank you. Welcome to In Her Closet and today we're talking to Lorena Fleur who is Melbourne model and fashion entrepreneur. Hi, how are you going? Good to have you here. It's so exciting to look into your closet. I loved all your clothes on The Bachelor and to find out that you have an online store is actually fantastic. Mm -hmm. So talk, talk us through it, please. 
Okay, so some of my favourite pieces would be uh, for going out somewhere fabulous. I love something with a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. So some a dress like that with lots yeah. of texture or with a feather. Yeah, there, this one's beautiful. That makes me feel extra fabulous. Or even something really plain but with a lot of structure. I did this on The Bachelor this similar style and it was really well received. It's a bit Victoria Beckham. Yeah, very much very so. Classy. Very glamorous. So. Yeah, and these pieces are just timeless. You can just bring them out year after year and they just don't date. If they're beautiful quality and they're cut really well, and the, then they're timeless. Do you get styled on The Bachelor or um, does everybody just wear their own outfits? Uh, everybody was brought a few of their own dresses mm -hmm. along. We did have a professional stylist who provided all those amazing gowns. I personally dressed myself and some of the other the girls bought a along a couple of their own dresses as well, but it was mainly styled by the You can mm -hmm. tell because I've looked at your boutique and your online store and most of the clothes that you have here and that's what you really wore. So that was your style. I yeah. couldn't imagine someone's style. Very nice. So you can find all those clothes online on your store? Yes. They, everything that I did wear on The Bachelor was from my own store. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of it has sold out now that the pieces that I did wear on the show. Not all of them, but it was really well received actually. Yeah, right. that was one, one of the things you were known for, your style and a couple of Besides other. the straight <laughs> Can you um, talk us through that, the, those college, light colored shirts? I think the there. basics, because I think sometimes it's really easy to find something that looks beautiful dressed up, but sometimes I have troubles with basics. My basics, uh, bare essentials would be an incredible white shirt. I think every girl needs a great go-to white shirt. But they're mm -hmm. the hardest things to find. They are, they're so elusive. They're either too corporate or too casual or not quite there. relaxed enough. Right. But an awesome pair of black dress shorts for me is my basic go-to. And I think they're incredibly versatile. You can wear them with camis mm -hmm. and sweaters and blouses and mm -hmm. t-shirts. And there's also this dress. So I think every girl should have one of these. Definitely. Every girl needs a go-to dress in their wardrobe and mm -hmm. a bandage dress just does the job. They're great because you can wear them out to dinner or a party or the disco or if you have an event or something and it's last minute and you don't know what to wear, they're a great go-to. I also love wearing a bando, a bandage dress with a big full skirt over the top. Mm. And oh, that's yeah, an interesting one. It works really, really well. Why is that? Is that for no flashing or what's the reason? No, just to hold just, it in and you can yeah, wear it as a top. Okay. The dress is already tight and structured, right. so you're, you're not tucking it in the whole time like you would be with a blouse or, or a cami. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Mm. And you've got this really interesting little number in your closet with the buttons at the back. Tell us about this one. This, you asked me to bring along some of my favourites and this is a favourite. I love the buttons down the back and the soft baby skin skin coloured silk. Um, this piece inspired me to start my boutique. It embodied everything that I wanted to deliver with my brand. It's soft and elegant and pretty and dainty and feminine. Yeah. And that was something I really wanted to um, to share. So that was my first inspiration, that piece, to start my boutique. So. Yeah, it's quite a classic one. Yeah. Um, we also want to ask, because we were talking before about the pros and cons of being on reality TV. Uh -huh. How have you found um, your business success or you know your modeling career, your boutique um, after The Bachelor? Oh, it's been incredible. A lot of the clothes that I wore on The Bachelor were from my own boutique mm -hmm. and then a lot of women identified with what I put out there and it's been really well received. I've had a lot of um, interest shown in a lot of the outfits that I wore on the show, so it was so you, wonderful. You even mentioned that some of the things that you wore were actually sold out. So the moment you put it on, everything you had was just Sold out. Yeah, especially that green Tinkerbell dress from the uh, Street Pie Day. Mm, <laughs> that was a beautiful one. Hashtag Dirty Street Pie. Yeah, I was really surprised that people were so into that dress you, after that whole incident. Are you? How do you? How do you stand on the Dirty Street Pie hashtag? Are you for it? Do you want it to disappear? Are you glad you threw it in there? Do you oh, get free pies? No, I don't <laughs> get free pies. But it's been it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. But I think it's sort of been done to death okay. now. Okay. At the yeah. moment, mm. so you kind of want to step away from it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, get it, copyright that thing, get it on a t-shirt, and I swear to you, everybody will buy it. Like it's what, been done it's already. <laughs> I actually asked one of the radio stations to send me one. Oh, so already. you didn't even get a share of that one. Someone was Someone at it before you. It. And um, what about your love life after The Bachelor? Do you find it harder uh, going on dates or meeting guys, or do you find it easier? Um, it's been great because going on The Bachelor, you're pretty much putting an ad out on national television. I'm single. <laughs> and so it's been great because I've, I've put myself out there 
And now I've been getting a little bit of response back and a few, you know, cheeky emails here and there. And yeah, I, I have been approached quite a few times by some really lovely people. Oh, so that's it's, good news. It's, it's fantastic. You might encourage Sasha to go on the next <laughs> one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely going to encourage my <laughs> But she is there would. anything that you would want to take back or that you wish they wouldn't have put on national television? Look, it's pretty difficult to say because ultimately you just want to be able to be yourself and be for it to be well received. And when you're well received by everyone else around you, like I got on like a house on fire with all those girls, mm -hmm. and we got each other and we would, you know, we would hang it on each other and take the piece out of each other a little bit and we all got it and nobody got offended. And I think that's the beauty of having really close friends is you don't offend each other that easily. So when the cameras come on and they only take a snippet of what you say, and the general public can't see that the dynamic is super comfortable and not, you know. It was not, very comfortable. It did look comfortable. Yeah. You had a few little tips with Amber. Um, was that overplayed on the show or? No, no, not at all. It just, it was what it was and it happened how it happened. And we all got along great regardless of any, you know, spats that went down. So I guess sometimes you could regret the way that, you know, people interpreted the way that it was portrayed. But ultimately I was just being myself and you got to stand by that. Did you specifically go on there to find love or did you just go on there to for a new experience? Because we've had this conversation and we can't agree. She thinks people go on there to find love. I think... No, I, I think you have to be a little bit crazy to purely go there for love. I think a lot of people go for the experience. Yeah, definitely. For me, ultimately, I wanted the experience. Mm. Right. Secondly, I was putting out an ad on national television for love. And I think right. there's no greater gesture than going on The Bachelor to say, you know, that you're open to it. Yeah, publicity is always better than actual advertising. <laughs> um, and final question, which I'm really curious about. Um, now that Blake is with Louise, he's chosen her eventually. Uh -huh. From being in the house and knowing her, do you think that they're truly in love? Do you think that they're going to last? What do you think? I hope, I hope they last. I mean, I wish them all the best. I think, I don't know if Blake knew exactly what he was hmm. looking for and he seemed a little bit confused and he had us all on the edge of our seats the whole time. We couldn't tell, you know, who, if there was a front runner, we, we assumed a couple of times, but I don't think he knew exactly what he wanted and, until you know, maybe the last minute himself. Right. But I didn't think any of you guys actually were that into it either, to be honest, watching it. It was more the competitive thing that got everybody going. I don't think anybody was like that in love. No, the girls were falling for him. Really? Yeah, they well, were falling. You're, you're in captivity. And you do get a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. You know how like sometimes, we were talking about it also before we started the show, sometimes you get that competitive with each other that you actually feel like you have emotions for somebody, yeah. but you're not really having genuine feelings for them. Well, you you're don't, just, you it's don't emotional. Know. In the end, I guess, when it comes down to crunch time, you've got to say to yourself, do I really love this guy or do I just want the glory? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, fortunately, I didn't make it that far to really have to ask myself that. Right. Um, but yeah, it was just an incredible experience. So you, we were enjoying it the whole time. Yeah, it was fun. It, it yeah, was, it and you like... pretty much you're not really welcome there if you don't have a crush on the back. Mm -hmm. so right. You, <laughs> you have to get. Oh, yeah. okay. And is there anything that you've learned about dating or love that you could share with share the viewers? With us, you've given us great fashion tips. Um, my love advice. Look, if I had incredible love advice, I wouldn't be single. <laughs> but That's not true. Yeah, uh, it's to just be yourself and. Let somebody love you for who you are because if you have to be someone else, it's gonna come you know, it's gonna come out in the end and yeah, you wanna end up with somebody who completely loves and accepts you for who you are. Looks like you've got somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well there you have it, Lorena. Thank you so much for coming down. You're the sweetest gem. Um, and if you want to find out more about Lorena, her boutique and her modeling, you can go to the and we will take you right there.